Uh, do not put that there. No, no, you're too young for this. And I'm never gonna eat an egg again. Hello, creeps. Andy here, and today I want to read another book with you. I'm sorry these reading vlogs are so close together, but I will be going out of town this week, and so I just needed a few videos where I didn't have to prepare beforehand, you know? So anyways, we are going to be reading today Story of the Eye. Let me see how you pronounce this guy's name because I can't pronounce anything correctly. George Bataille. George Bataille. I know that I've been reading more extreme horror books for reading vlogs, but lately I've been getting into kind of just like weirder, strange stories, and I've been doing more research into those and purchased some of those and put them on, on my, ow, frick. There's a freaking splinter in here. And put them into my list, which by the way, can I tell you something funny before we begin? I have a list on Amazon of just all the books that I want. And so I just keep like a continually growing list of books. And I guess my mother-in-law asked my husband what I wanted for Christmas and he just sent her that list without telling me. And Duncan Ralston has a new book coming out called Pedo Island Massacre, I think. Oh, Pedo Island Blood Bloodbath. And I was like, you can't just send your mom my list of books without me going through it first. And so I removed that for the time being so she wouldn't think that I was strange. Although there are a lot of weird books on there, but she probably won't. You know, they're not as obvious as that one. But anyways, I thought that was funny. So today we are going to be reading this. This one I don't believe is extreme in the sense that the other books that I've been reading are extreme. I think it's more like sexual and just kind of strange. It just says a legendary shocker that uncovers the dark side of erotic by means of forbidden obsessive fantasies of excess and sexual extremes. So uh, yeah, I think we're just gonna dive in and read this together. I know that when I read the extreme horror books, a lot of you guys ask for me to just give spoilers at the end. I don't really feel all that comfortable doing that for a few reasons, but this one was written in, first published in 1928, and so I feel a little bit more comfortable giving stuff like this away. So I'll give you more about this one for sure. We'll read some quotes. I don't know how extreme this is gonna be, so just keep that in mind. If you're sensitive to stuff, you might wanna miss this video. I really don't know. So uh, yeah, let's just begin. I'm kind of excited and a little nervous. Already getting a little strange. And we're two pages in. Wait, I'm sorry. They just hit someone with a car and killed them. And it's just so quickly mentioned and passed. It says, I remember one day when we were in a car tooling along at top speed, we crashed into a cyclist. And an apparently very young and very pretty girl. Her head was almost totally ripped off by the wheels. For a long time we stared at the corpse and then he just moves on to something else. Like, what do you mean? Wait, can we go back to the dead body, please? I, I, I just, I can't get over the body. What happened to the body? Okay, chapter one. Wow, that didn't take any time to just, it just started real hot. Uh, chapter two, first line is, that was the period when Simone developed a mania for breaking eggs with her ass. What am I in for? I, I, um, ah, okay. <laughs> this, is, this is wild. Her mom walks in on them and she just says, pretend there's no one there. It's just wild how quickly these things are passed over like they're not important in, these, in this book. I, I'm sorry, what? What? Oh, it gets worse than just her mom looking. What the heck? Let me read this paragraph to you. And it struck me that death was the sole outcome of my erection, as if Simone and I were killed. Then the universe of our unbearable personal vision was certain to be replaced by the pure stars, fully unrelated to any external gazes, and realizing in a cold stare, without human delays or detours, something that strikes me as a goal of my sexual licentiousness, a geometric incandescence, among other things, the coinciding part of life and death, being and nothingness, perfectly fulgurating. Interesting. This book is strange. Okay, it's about this guy. I don't think the guy we has a name or anything. I think he's an unnamed narrator and he has this 
girl, Simone, and they're young, they're like 16-ish, and they're exploring their sexuality, but in absolutely wild ways. And they have their friends over, and they have an orgy, and one of the girls kind of loses it and starts screaming, and she gets sent to a, a, a what did I call it? She gets sent to a, an, an institute and they are like obsessed with her but it, I think it's also interesting because how she's portrayed in the novel uh, is very innocent and the opposite of them. Maybe she has some interest in what they're doing but she also on the outside is more reserved and so I don't know if this whole story is just about rebellion and straying from normality or if it has something maybe a little bit deeper meaning, especially with the girl in the institute like defiling innocence or losing innocence or maybe innocence is just a facade. I don't know. But anyways, very strange stuff going on in here. Right now they are cracking eggs into toilets and watching them. A lot of egg stuff going on. So we'll keep reading. I'm like not even halfway done yet and already just straight debauchery and chaos. This is a strange read and I'm never gonna eat an egg again. This sentence says, it is fair to say that the room of a bedridden invalid is just the right place for gradually rediscovering childhood lewdness. I'm gonna have to respectfully disagree. Yeah, now they're rubbing eggs everywhere. So the egg thing, this is what it says about eggs. It says, upon my asking what the word urinate reminded her of, she replied, terminate, the eyes, with a razor, something red, the sun, and egg, a calf's eye, because of the color of the head, the calf's head, and also because the white of the egg was the white of the eye and the yolk, the eyeball. The eye, she said, was egg-shaped. That's kind of all it says about the obsession with eggs so far. So, uh, yeah, let's see. Let's see what else they do with eggs. Man, this book is so wild. I feel, I feel like I'm on acid. Okay, so a few other odd things in here. He says, our narrator says, oh, they're going to the sanitarium to break the girl out of her imprisonment. And he says, but now to my surprise, even though I was ill at ease anywhere in the world, I felt, I felt at bottom as if I were going home. So I'm just curious if that's maybe some foreshadowing or I don't know, interesting that he feels at home with the people that don't fit into society. Is it more metaphorical? That could make sense as well. It is interesting too, because I feel like these people, you know, you read a lot of those books, like The Stranger, for example, where they're, what's the word for it? I don't have my phone on me, but they don't really fit in with society and they kind of live on the outskirts of society, not literally, but like, you know, separated from people. Um, I feel like these characters are quite different because they don't abide by societal rules, but they're not necessarily outcasts in a way that a lot of other narrators in that group of books is. So I also found that kind of interesting. Anyways, they go, sorry, I took notes in case you're wondering what this is. They go and break her out of the sanitarium. She kind of doesn't know what's going on. She thinks Simone, the other girl, is a wolf and she's scared of a priest of the guillotine. So back at the orgy she had locked herself in a wardrobe and our main character lets her out of the wardrobe but he was covered in blood because he fell on some glass and so she thought he was the priest of the guillotine and so i'm gonna read you this paragraph it's kind of long but i just want you to feel how odd this book is so this is the paragraph <clears throat> He says, I stretched out in the grass, my skull on a large flat rock, and my eyes staring straight up at the Milky Way. The strange breach of astral sperm and heavenly urine across the cranial vault formed by the rings of constellations, that open crack at the summit of the sky, apparently made of ammonial, ammonia, Ammonia, ammoniacal, I don't know, vapor shining in the immensity, in empty space where they burst forth absurdly like a, uh, sorry, rooster's crow, in total silence. A broken egg, a broken eye, or my own dazzled skull weighing down the rock, bouncing symmetrical images back to infinity. The nauseating crow of the rooster in particular coincides with my own life. That is to say now, the cardinal, the cardinal because... That's what she called him because he was covered in blood and he opened the wardrobe. Because of the crack, the red color, the discordant shrieks he provoked in the wardrobe, and also because one cuts the throats of roosters. 
This book is absolutely wild. Oh, this is interesting. We may have gotten to the core here. To others, the universe seems decent because decent people have gelded eyes. That is why they fear lewdness. Hmm. My kind of debauchery soils not only my body and my thoughts, but also anything I may conceive in its course. That is to say, the vast starry universe, which merely serves as a backdrop interesting man this book is wild i cannot believe that this was written in 1928 and this gives modern day books a run for their money wait she's dead wait what what she wasn't dead a second ago how'd she die what oh i just don't know if that was necessary this is an interesting line right here. Um, the corpse was irritating for her, as though she could not bear to the thought that this creature so similar to her could not feel her anymore. Any boredom in the world is linked for me to that moment and above all to an obstacle as ridiculous as death. No, <laughs> don't do that. Can we not defile corpses? <laughs> is that too much to ask? Okay, I'm gonna keep reading and taking notes. I'll uh, see you in a little. Ugh, do not put that there. Oh, what the fuck? One reason why I can't really tell you everything that happens in the extreme horror books is because there's no way I could explain to you what happens in these books without staying monetized. I don't know how much I can push YouTube without getting demonetized, but I gotta tell you, there are some pretty lewd, scenes in here uh this one in particular and i wish i could explain i'll explain this a guy gets a bullhorn through the eye and his eye is dangling from his head so you know that's kind of gross but also the other stuff that happens is just like again how does somebody's brain come up with this i don't think i have too much else to say oh one thing because the story is just I mean, it's just chock full of lewdness and depravity and it's just, oh my gosh, it's just utter chaos. But the use of the word willy nilly <laughs> when describing these really intense moments is hilarious. And I just, I love that willy nilly has been in here multiple times. <laughs> so I think that's been my favorite part so far. Otherwise it has been a quite, quite an interesting read. I haven't quite deciphered what I feel like the meaning of everything is yet, but there are definitely themes in here or maybe some symbolism in here. A lot of small round shaped things. So we had the eggs earlier as well as eyeballs and now the testicles of a bull. There is definitely some repetition in here that I haven't quite uncovered. I haven't quite figured out where we're at in the story. But uh, it, it is interesting to read a story from the 20s and just see what level of fuckery ensues because this has been an interesting ride so far. It, it's also just boggles my mind, like this comment. Needless to say, everything was, it was promptly back to normal. Um, some guy just got his eye gouged out and your girlfriend is playing with bull testicles. I just, it's just, it's not normal, my friend. Normal is not the word that I would use to describe what's going on here. This girl has lost her marbles. Speechless. I'm, I'm speechless. I have nothing to say except what? the fuck oh hello no no you're too young for this <laughs> i'm torn because i want to just tell you everything that happens in this book but i also I think some people that really like extreme horror books would actually really enjoy this story. So I also don't want to give away everything. Okay, it may seem like I missed a lot of the plot, but other than murder and a strange encounter with a priest and placing ball testicles in bodily crevices, there really isn't much else to the story other than 
them just exploring their sexuality and traveling to different places and getting other people involved in it. Holy fuck. I just finished the story. Wow, okay. Um, I have so much to say and also so little to say at the same time. How do I even start? What do I even say? Where do I even go from here? So at first I thought maybe we would do a wrap up and dive and be a little bit more analytical about things that happen in the story. And I think I've mentioned a, a few things that I felt were interesting. You know, eyes compared to eggs, compared to testicles, <laughs> compared to other things. It, it, I mean, there's just, there's a lot going on here. But here's the thing. At the very end, you get this part two and it talks about, I believe, his life like his own personal life he says while composing this part this partly imaginary tale i was struck by several coincidences and since they appeared indirectly to bring out the meaning of what i had written i would like to describe them and so he goes on to describe really messed up stuff from his childhood and how that related to the story and sometimes when reading or watching movies i may not appreciate that because i don't think that the author should have to tell you the meaning behind something for you. You know what I mean? Like everybody has their own interpretation and it doesn't have to be the same as the writer. But I think because this tale is so bizarre, it's really interesting to see where his mind connected things and how they came out in this depraved way. But really the original subject matter was just very scarring for a child to go through. Wow, um, definitely made me feel like my life isn't that bad. <laughs> I really, really enjoyed that last part of the story and I think it enhanced the read so much more. I don't want to get too overly analytical with it because one, it was my first read and it's such a bizarre tale that I don't, like I really have to sit down and, and go through it line by line and really pick out themes and things. And eventually I will do that if you guys are interested, but for right now, let's just leave it on kind of a basic overview. One other thing I wanted to point out, which I don't know if I mentioned earlier, but it's just that death and awful things are so mundane. And I thought it was interesting because he had said in this little overview here, this is in regards to his mother's suicide attempt. And after he describes that in the horrible things that happened to his father as well. He says, I never linger over such memories for they have, they have long lost any emotional significance for me. There was no way I could restore them to life except for by transforming them and making them unrecognizable. At first glance to my eye, solely because during that deformation, they acquired the lewdest of meanings. And so, hold on, my cat scratching me, let out. And so as disturbing as this book is, and as disturbing as extreme horror books are, I do think that it's interesting to take something so hard to go through and turn it into a work of fiction, even if it doesn't have necessarily anything to do exactly with what happened in your real life. Uh, he has this also paragraph right here. He says that his father ended up going into kind of a state of delirium and the doctor took his mother aside, his wife, the, the guy, Am I explaining this correctly? His father, Delirious, invites doctor over. The doctor takes the wife away. So he's, he's left with his father. That's kind of just raving mad. And he yells, doctor, let me know when you're done fucking my wife. And then this paragraph right here, he says, for me, that utterance, which in a split second annihilated the demoralizing effects of a strict upbringing, left me with something like a steady obligation, unconscious and unwilled, the necessity of finding an equivalent to that sentence in any situation I happen to be in, and this largely explains story of the eye. So you kind of get just a deeper meaning by experiencing his own childhood and what he went through and how that related to the story and wow yeah i love this but as far as the deeper meaning behind it i'm gonna kind of leave that up to you i mean this is just a reading vlog so i i think that's fine and i'm gonna recommend this for people who are into extreme horror it's extremely sexual and vile and maybe read like a synopsis of it before going into it yeah if you're into extreme horror highly highly recommend I thought that this was pretty interesting and I am honestly interested to do a little bit more research and read it again and kind of see what I can pick out. I'm also very curious if you guys have read this, kind of what your interpretation of the story is. I just feel like 
my own interpretation doesn't compare to the ending of what was read so i kind of just want to leave it open-ended if that's okay with you guys anyways thank you so much for watching that was a wild ride and i really every video every video i drop a book i don't understand but anyways i really enjoyed that that was not at all what i expected and yeah maybe we'll talk about some other stuff kind of related to that work in a separate video if you guys are curious but anyways thank you for watching i'll see you soon with another horror video bye guys i got nightmares in my head i fear that the thoughts build up until i can't hear that my mind fills up into a creature and it haunts me somewhere much deeper